Okay, this is a nine-cylinder radial engine designed by Lee Hodson in Cincinnati, and uh, it has nine cylinders with one-inch pistons and a total of eight cubic inches displacement. We're running a 32-inch diameter, 14-inch pitch propeller, which it will turn at about 2,800 RPM. How long did it take you to make this wonderful engine, John? Uh, I worked on it for three winters over a five-year period. The plans uh, that Lee provided are very, very detailed, about 200 pages of excellent quality plans. And uh, his estimated building time was about 1,200 hours, and that's probably not too far off. But the first winter, I made the cylinders and heads. And the second winter, I made the crankcase, the crankshaft, the cam, and the oil pumps. And then two winters, I didn't do anything. And then this past winter, I did all the auxiliary things like the rocker boxes, the rocker arms, the push rods, and the ignition system. I modified his plans slightly. Uh, the plans call for a round valve tower with no rocker box and no push rod tubes. It had exposed rockers and exposed pushrod tubes, and I changed it a little bit, made the valve towers oval, put a rocker box on it, and enclosed the pushrods in tubes to make it a little bit more like a, like a modern radio. Tell us about, about the materials you used in the engine. Okay, the uh, cylinder heads and the crankcase itself are made out of uh, 6061 aluminum. The pistons are a 2024 aluminum. The cylinder barrels are 12L14 high lead contact free machining steel. And the crankshaft is stainless steel. Did you machine all the parts for it or did some of them come already pre-cast as a kit? The only part that uh, Mr. Hodgson sells is the rear cover, which is a, a complex almost like a hemisphere with several bosses on it uh, is the only piece that he sells and internally there are 13 gears in the engine and 12 of those you can buy one of them you have to cut but other than that every piece in it is machined uh, from just ordinary bar stock the pistons the rings the rods the cam mm -hmm. how about the prop this particular propeller is, uh, was made by PK Props in Kansas. Uh, it's a model of a, of a Cincinnich from about the 50s era and looks absolutely like one. This is a work of art itself, but I did not make that. Uh, PK Props made that. What about the ignition system? Okay, the ignition is a uh, single ignition. This is a 10 millimeter standard spark plug in the front, which is, I think, used in some small weed eaters and small gasoline engines, but are readily available. Uh, the distributor has a rotor button with nine magnets and a, a Hall effect transistor that picks up when the magnets cross to give the, uh, the signal to the ignition module, which is in the back, and uh, this is a capacitive discharge ignition uh, that was made by MJN uh, Mike Neal in Florida and is, has been a very, very good running ignition system for it. But it, it is single ignition, capacitive discharge with Hall effect sensors. So this gets rid of the points and capacitors and things that you have to have, normally have in the distributor. Okay, can you explain to us the components in the rear of the engine? Okay, this is the distributor, and this is the carburetor, which is uh, an OS7H, which is used in their size 61 helicopter, one of their helicopter engines. Model helicopter. Model helicopter mm -hmm. engines, right. And the copper tubes that come in, this engine has a pressurized oil system with two oil pumps. The uh, top pump picks up oil from the tank, pumps it through, the crankshaft to lubricate all of the crankshaft bearings. I've got an oil pressure gauge on it. It runs about 80 PSI oil pressure. Then the oil is collected in a 
sump at the bottom of the engine and is picked up by a scavenge pump and pumped back into the oil tank. And this is the oil tank back here? This tank is both oil and gas. There's a divider in the middle, so it holds four ounces of oil on one side and four ounces of fuel on the other side. Uh, tell us about the fuel and the oil. Okay, the oil, I'm, right now I'm running a 50 weight aeroshell mineral oil in it until it finishes breaking in. This has only been running about three weeks now. And uh, the fuel I'm running 100 low lead av gas. Mm -hmm. That's the throttle and the oil pressure gauge down right, there. The, the oil bottom. pressure gauge and the throttle control here. And uh, the mixture controls here on the side of the, of the carburetor. And that whole aft plate is the casting you got from the, the company, and then you from, just clean that up. From and... Lee Hodgson, yeah. Uh, okay. Can you start up for us now, please? Yeah, initially I had the electric started and I had a 20 inch uh, club propeller on it with a, uh, a spinner on the front that I could start with a, a rubber cone on a drill. Here comes a guy with the, that one now. And this is the little test club that was on it. And this is the, the prop that comes with the plans for the engine. Uh, this is just something I wanted something that looked more like a real airplane propeller to go on it. So uh, I initially had to start it with the electric drill because the piston's rings did not seat well enough for it to uh, have enough compression to crank on its own. But after uh, 10 or 15 times of running it, cranking it with the drill, then it's been cranking fairly reliably with the, uh, by propping it. I have to uh, put my finger over the carburetor, turn it through a few times to pull some gas into the intake, then I'll cut the ignition on and flip it, and if we're lucky, it'll go the first time. Ignition on, throttle open. Clear. So what RPMs were you seeing there at the maximum and minimum? 2,700 maximum, and the slowest I got it was about 1,100. Great. What's your next project? I think a small V8, roughly the same scale, one-inch pistons. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.